Sometimes there's things that we hold back from him because maybe we feel like they're too bad or too dark or too shameful. There's things that we feel like maybe Jesus doesn't care about or that he doesn't want to heal, but Jesus wants us all. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, as you can see from the title, we're talking about healing. When I was in my early 20s, I went through a season where I was just crippled with anxiety, specifically anxiety about what people thought about me to the point that it was paralyzing and I longed for freedom I longed for healing. And it was in this space that I came across a Bible story that so beautifully revealed to me Jesus's heart for healing and also some practical steps that I could take to receive the healing that he desired for me. I feel like all of us have some area of our lives where we are longing for healing. Maybe for you it is anxiety or overthinking like it's been for me, or maybe a depression, or maybe a compulsion, or addiction of some sort, or maybe it's something that you physically need healing in. And I think it's so important for us to remember that Jesus is our great physician. He is our healer. But as we look at all the times that he healed, Throughout the Gospels, it's important to take note that he never healed the same way twice. Sometimes he healed publicly, sometimes he healed privately, sometimes he healed from a distance, sometimes he healed through touch, sometimes he healed instantly, sometimes he healed through a process, and sometimes the healing wasn't at all what we would expect. Sometimes he allows a particular condition to persist because he is using it to bring about a deeper soul level healing or even to lead people to himself. So regardless of what healing might look like for you, I pray that this Bible study encourages you by reminding you of God's heart toward you and also giving you some practical steps that you can take as well. And I also just wanna give the reminder that if you are going through something where you could just really use someone to talk through it with, I always have linked in the description of my videos a link to better help it'll get you 10% off it is a super easy and affordable way to get connected with a Christian therapist and if they match you with somebody who isn't the best fit at first you can always switch at no cost it is a service that we love we've used it before fully stand behind it and believe that God works through it and so if that is something that you are wanting be sure to check the link down below and now let's go ahead and get into the Bible study before we do if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel Channel. I make Christian faith and lifestyle content aimed at encouraging you to know God more through his word and to grow in his likeness. And I would love to have you here and then give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful or encouraging. So the story we're going to be looking at today is found in Mark chapter five. It's the story of the bleeding woman. Maybe you've heard this story before. Maybe you haven't. One thing I do want to make note of one contextual point before we get into it is that as this story happens, Jesus is actually already in route to help another person who needs healing and that is Jairus's daughter. So Jesus is on his way to heal Jairus's daughter. When this story happens, here's what it says, Mark 5, 24 through 34. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. There was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you and yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. So I just wanna walk through this story a little bit. First of all, this woman had a condition of bleeding for 12 years. Now, in these times when a woman was, you know, on that time of the month when she was bleeding, for that period of time, she was considered to be ceremonially and socially unclean. 
The fact that this woman was bleeding for 12 years, it tells us that not only was she physically suffering, but she was also emotionally and socially suffering because she was considered to be an outcast. She was considered to be ceremonially and socially unclean, which means that she would have been isolated. She would have been felt shame. She would have felt alone. She couldn't be around people. And it says that she had suffered much under many physicians, that she'd spent all she had, but she was no better for it. She was actually worse. And so this condition that this woman had, it affected every aspect of her life. It affected her socially. It affected her physically. It affected her financially. This woman had tried everything, yet even though she had tried everything, when she heard about Jesus, she had hope. She had faith. It says in Mark 5, 28, she says, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Now, according to Jewish belief, if an unclean person, such as this woman, were to touch a clean person, then the touch of the unclean person would make the clean person unclean. But the power of Jesus is so great that when this unclean woman touched him, he didn't become unclean, but rather a touch of his garment made her clean. It made her whole. This makes me think of the hymn that says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus restores, he heals, he redeems, he makes all things new. So this woman touches Jesus's garment. She is instantly healed. And Jesus says in Mark 5, 30, who touched my garments? I think this is so interesting because this woman, she clearly tried to obtain healing from Jesus secretly, discreetly. She wasn't trying to call attention to herself, perhaps out of embarrassment, because again, this condition would have been isolating. It would have been embarrassing. It would have been shameful, but Jesus doesn't allow her to obtain that healing secretly. Instead, he invites her out into the open, not to shame her, but to free her. Jesus wanted to heal her not only physically, but to bring her freedom from her shame as well. He wanted not just the bleeding woman to know, but everyone else to know as well that this woman was no longer unclean. She was no longer an outcast. Jesus cared about her physical suffering, but he also cared about her shame. He wanted to bring freedom from it. Mark 5.33 says, But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Those two words are the two words that stuck out to me the first time I read through this passage and that always continue to stick out to me. And those are the words, whole truth. This woman was afraid. She was being called out into the open, but it says she came before him in fear and trembling and she told him the whole truth. I think that sometimes we come to Jesus in part. Sometimes there's things that we hold back from him because maybe we feel like they're too bad or too dark or too shameful. There's things that we feel like maybe Jesus doesn't care about or that he doesn't want to heal, but Jesus wants us all. He wants us to bring everything before him so that he can heal and redeem and restore it all. I wanna read you a note on this passage from the Enduring Word commentary and also present this to you as an exercise for you to walk through on your own. Here's the note says, when we come to Jesus, we must tell him the whole truth. We must tell him the whole truth about our sin and not leave anything out. We must tell him the whole truth about our suffering. He wants to know where it hurts. We must tell him the whole truth about the other doctors and cures we tried. We must tell him the whole truth about our hopes because he wants to know what he can do for us. Doesn't your heart just sigh a breath of relief in hearing this? No part of what you are walking through is something that you have to carry alone. And so I wanna sort of take this commentary note and present it to you as four different journal prompts. And I encourage you to just spend some time journaling through these things. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Even just a few sentences of bringing your heart before the Lord. The first one is this. Tell Jesus the whole truth about your sin and don't leave anything out. Now hear me, suffering is not always the result of sin and Jesus makes this very clear. In John chapter nine, there is a man who is born blind and here's how an exchange goes between Jesus and his disciples. It says, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. 
Sin is not always the cause of our suffering, yet it can be because sin does have consequences. But plenty of other times our suffering is maybe the result of someone else's sin, or maybe it is simply the result of the fact that we live in a fallen world and God is allowing suffering to happen because he intends on showing his glory and his power through it. Suffering does not always mean that we are sinning or that we don't have enough faith to be healed. God is sovereign and he has other purposes that we cannot see. But this journal prompt is simply an invitation to ask, where might sin be contributing to this thing? Or is sin a part of this thing? And if it is, we need to bring that fully before God because scripture is so clear that God brings about healing through confession, through bringing things into the light. An example of this might be when I talked before about really just feeling paralyzed by, by anxiety and overthinking and fears of what other people think of me. Some questions to ask myself in that are, am I idolizing what people think about me or finding my identity and being liked or admired by people? Am I constantly going to a certain person's page on social media who I know I'm going to be tempted to compare myself to? Is the sin of envy at play here? Am I neglecting to fill myself with the truth of God's word and to dwell on that like he commands me to do? Bring those things before God and ask him to transform your heart and to help you to turn from them. The second journal prompt is to tell Jesus the whole truth about your suffering. Tell him what hurts. Get specific with Jesus about what it is that hurts knowing that he cares. An example of this with going back to the example I shared at the beginning of this video of dealing with anxiety, it might sound like, God, I just can't turn my mind off. I feel stuck in my thoughts. I feel paralyzed by fears of what other people think about me. Help, Lord. The third journal prompt is to tell Jesus the whole truth about the other avenues you've sought for healing. Tell him about how you tried to numb it through mindless, endless scrolling or through a TV show or through all those unhealthy snacks. Tell Jesus about how you've tried to heal it on your own and confess that you need him. Only Jesus can heal. The fourth and final journal prompt is to tell Jesus the whole truth about your hopes, about what you desire. How beautiful is it that we can bring before Jesus and lay before him telling him exactly what it is we desire. This might look like saying, Lord, I long to experience freedom. I long to walk in the confidence of who you have created me to be. I long to experience joy and peace. And I know those things only come from you. Tell Jesus your hopes, what it is you desire, and then trust his timing and his process of bringing about healing in your life. I highly encourage you to take time to journal through these prompts because I truly believe that even in just taking time to bring your whole self before him, to tell him the whole truth about these things, that you will experience that first little taste of healing, that first little taste of peace. That doesn't mean it's going to be instantaneous. Like we talked about, Jesus heals in all sorts of different ways and he has purposes in everything, but he is going to begin to bring you peace as you bring your whole self before him. And you are going to recognize that you are not walking through it alone. I hope this video was an encouragement to you. I love this Bible story. I think it is so powerful. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments if you'd like to share a testimony of a time that God brought healing to your life or to the life of somebody you know. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.